the diastrophic forces consume an enormous length of time to build the landforms or you can say that the diastrophic forces are those forces that takes thousands of years, millions of years, billions of years to build landforms. So as we talk about endogenic forces, we know that endogenic forces are those forces that generate within the earth's interior. Got it? And it is the earth's internal heat which is responsible for the generation of these forces. What type of forces are they? Are they creating forces or destroying forces? Creating forces. And do you remember I told you one more term for endogenic forces? Tectonic forces. Very good. So they are also known as tectonic forces. What are the exogenic forces also known as? Geomorphic forces. Got it? Because they change the shape of the earth's surface through the process of erosion. Now look here. These are variability developers. It means they develop landforms. Now on the basis of the time taken to develop the landforms, endogenic forces could be categorized into two broad categories. The first one is diastrophic forces or diastrophic endogenic forces. You can call them like that. And the second one is sudden forces. Now, what is the difference between the diastrophic and the sudden forces? Both are endogenic forces. It means both develop landforms and landforms could be either elevated features or they could be depressed features. The diastrophic forces consume an enormous length of time to build the landforms or you can say that the diastrophic forces are those forces that takes thousands of years, millions of years, billions of years to build landforms. Do you understand that? It means their work is so slow that a human being cannot appreciate the changes brought about by these forces during his or her lifetime. Got it? Like say for example, there is a mountain. Its height is suppose, let's suppose its height is 6,344 kilometers. That's its height. Do you understand that? Now in one year, this mountain experiences an increase in height and this increase is then makes the height of the mountain as 6,344.003 kilometers. Now that could be considered as just human error. Kai bar aap calculate karoke to ho sakta hai, zyada kuch error aja hai, idhar udhar. Remember that all landforms are expression of the constant struggle that goes on between two set of forces. And if the rate of upliftment, suck, uh, it is far more than the rate of downcutting, then the net result is a rising landform. Remember that? So here, the rate of upliftment is more than the rate of downcutting, whatever the case may be. But because the change is so less, the human beings cannot appreciate these changes over their lifetime. What is the average lifespan of a human being? 75 years. Let's take ideal scenario 100 years. Ideal scenario to yehi hoga. 100 years may be ho sakta hai jo change hai height mein, wo ho sakta hai ek centimeter ka ho. So, kai bar aap calculate karoge to ho sakta hai ye aap se lage ki aap se calculation error ho raha hai bar bar. Kai bar ek centimeter jada bhi ho sakta hai, kam bhi ho sakta hai. Like, you might remember that uh, many times when you go to your native places, you have seen certain mountains and you are seeing them since your childhood, they remain in the same fashion. Hardly they change in their overall uh, presentation. That is because they are created due to endogenetic diastrophic forces. So I am now technically defining the diastrophic forces. The diastrophic forces are those forces that take enormous amount of time period to develop the variabilities. The time taken by the diastrophic forces are so much that a human being, an average human being, haan, ab Einstein jase ho ge to ho sakta hai, ab detect kar lo. An average human being finds it very difficult to appreciate the changes brought about by the diastrophic forces during his or her lifetime. Got it? But across generations ho sakta hai, ki ye hum kar le. Like say for example, in thousand years, suppose the change in height was one kilometer. To thousand years pehle ka agar aapke paas koi evidence hai, to wahaan se abhi tak, aaj agar humne ek Himalaya ke photo kheech ke rakhi, 
और समझ लो 5000 थाउजेंड में कोई देख रहा है हिमालय को और ये पिक्चर अवेलेबल है सपोज इंटरनेट स्टेज बाय दैट टाइम देन ही कैन मेक एन कंपेरिजन एंड ही कैन अप्रिशिएट द चेंज बट नॉट वी ड्यूरिंग आवर लाइफ टाइम गॉट इट सो दैट इज डायस्ट्रोफिक एंडोजेनेटिक फोर्सेस द सेकेंड काइंड ऑफ फोर्सेस नाम से ही समझ में आ रहा है सडन सडन मीन्स दे ब्रिंग अबाउट द चेंजेस इन द लैंड फॉर्म्स और दे बिल्ड द लैंड फॉर्म्स इन दैट मच अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम that an average human being can appreciate the changes brought about by them during his or her lifetime jaise ki samajh ke dekho suppose there is volcanism if there is volcanism you know that lava comes from the earth's interior in fact it is hot molten rock material which is known as magma beneath the earth's surface and lava on the earth's surface as it comes up you know that it spreads over the surface cools and solidifies and converts into igneous rocks also known as volcanic rocks now if there are several periods of eruptions like this and suppose every eruption is followed by another eruption by every 10 years suppose there is an active volcano so with the passage of time will you not have a lava deposited cone or a volcanic mountain so you can experience the changes brought about by volcanism very quickly similarly earthquake can also cause some ground shifting and you can immediately notice that do you get that so remember any variability could be either an elevated feature or it could be a depressed feature so sudden forces are those forces which develop the landforms so quickly that a human being can appreciate the changes brought about by the sudden forces during his or her lifetime it means the changes brought about by the sudden forces are either in weeks months years sometimes even days or hours got it whereas they take thousands of years millions of years to bring about the change now earthquake and volcanism are the two best example of sudden forces earthquakes and volcanism i hope all of you are aware about these two activities earthquakes and volcanism now you tell me one thing if there is an earthquake in a crowded place or there is volcanism in a densely populated area will that bring some sort of disaster for the people say yes or no to that yes that's why a disaster is known as what catastrophe so these forces are also known as catastrophic forces got it so you have diastrophic forces and you have catastrophic forces but see it is not nature that kills it is human activity or human tinkering with nature that kills at least determinists would say this remember environmental determinants like say for example earthquakes do not kill buildings do that collapse during earthquakes and buildings are made by human beings so it is based on your engineering technique ab japan mein itne earthquake aate hain lekin unki engineering itni high class hai ki unme buildings collapse nahi hote but abhi dekho turkey mein jab aaya earthquake to kya hal ho gaya unka because their infrastructure is not earthquake resilient ki matlab jo earthquake ko bardasht karne इनफैक्ट अगर आप एक ओपन ग्राउंड में खड़े हैं और अर्थ को एक आए सो इट वुड बी लाइक अ फन राइड इज इट इट बट इफ यू आर इन अ बिल्डिंग देन इट वुड बी डूम्स डे फॉर यू गॉट इट सो एम अगेन रिपीटिंग वी आर ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड टाइप्स ऑफ एंडोजेनिक फोर्सेज देर टू टाइप्स ऑफ एंडोजेनिक फोर्सेज डायस्ट्रोफिक एंड कैटेस्ट्रोफिक और सडन फोर्सेज राइट इट वुड बी बेटर टू कॉल दम सडन फोर्सेज बिकॉज ऑल अर्थक्वेक्स एंड ऑल वोकैनिज्म डू नॉट क्रिएट कैटेस्ट्रॉक सम ऑफ दम डू गॉट इट so diastrophic forces are those forces that do their work so slowly that the changes brought about by them is rarely appreciated by human beings during their lifetime why because they take thousands of years millions of years to bring about the changes either in terms of elevation or in terms of depression the sudden forces are those forces that bring about the changes very quickly within days hours weeks months years etc the changes brought about by them can be appreciated by a human being very quickly during his or her life are you clear